Hello, everyone. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Yeah? Okay, so um, just a moment once I'm able to um, share my screen with you, then we will get going. So, um, okay. Is my screen up? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, thank you very much once again, Les, for this opportunity. It's uh, nice to meet you all. Um, Les has asked me to do um, a quick talk about um, our experiences with the Nigeria Bed Atlas project. Um, and without taking much time, I would very quickly like to kind of set this in the, in the context uh, that um, Les's question um, has asked. So, um, so looking at the country like Sweden, um, with a small, well, relatively small uh, land area, like about 420,000 square kilometers, um, it's estimated that there is about 9 million people and some 20,000 bird watchers in Sweden. And of course, in South Africa, and uh, you guys can uh, let me know if this is not correct, but um, a land area of about 1.2 uh, million square kilometers, about 56 million people, is that right? Um, and some several thousand bird watchers. So this was a quick estimate um, that we did just when we were about to start in Nigeria. And um, so for us in Nigeria, a land area of about 920 square kilometers, um, with a population that is estimated to be somewhere around 200 million, um, we had just about 100 bird watchers. And of course, this uh, 100 bird watchers uh, that I am talking about were mainly uh, um, students from the AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute. So people who were trained in conservation biology and very professional in the way that uh, they did their bird watching. So we had people that would mostly go out to bird watch if they were doing transects or point counts. And here we were trying to start um, a citizen science project encouraging people to have fun while bird watching. So basically this was a concept that was very new, even for those of us that were doing um, ornithology um, at Aplori and in Nigeria. So essentially in Africa, we can say somewhere around 10,000 bird watchers with a population of about 1.2 billion people. So this is just the context within which we were setting up uh, a citizen science project to look at birds, um, you know, developing all of this from scratch. So um, from the beginning, um, our interest was to update information about birds, uh, bird distribution. Um, and very importantly, we wanted volunteer members of the public to be a part of this process. Um, so people who we could convince, you know, to uh, take an interest in bird watching, we were looking to use this not only to update information about bird distribution, but also to engage people, you know, to get birds to be a window for most of these people to connect with the environment. And um, straight away, we had to get to work, and this was at the end of 2015. So um, the launch of this project um, in December 2015 was when we came together and officially decided to take on this crazy challenge. Um, I would say it's a crazy challenge because a lot of people thought so, and we ourselves thought it was a crazy challenge at the time. Um, so very uh, quickly, I will introduce you to the, um, the, um, the team when we started. So uh, there was Uf, Uf Otosen, um, there's um, Talatu Tende and myself. So this was the, um, the pioneer team uh, when we started the Bird Atlas project at the end of 2015. But very immediately, what we wanted to do was to get more of our colleagues um, on board because um, the existing bird watching community was more or less centered around um, the Aplori alumni. So we decided straight away that we we're going to try and get them on board. And um, one of the ways that we we're going to do this was to visit all of our colleagues at the different sites where they were. So people had come through the program at Aplori, finished their masters, and then gone to other parts of the country to do different things. So um, we came together as a team and initially 
did a map to get the distribution of where all the applauding trained uh, ornithologists were now working ar around the country. So this network was to become the backbone, you know, and the foundation upon which we're going to build this citizen science project from, um, for, for us in Nigeria. So we mapped the distribution, first of all, so not of birds, but of the, uh, the people who had the requisite skills, you know, upon which we're going to do most of this. Um, and when we visited them, we immediately came up with an idea to start bird clubs. So the idea of the bird clubs was to get this trained ornithologist, um, bring them together with the new um, citizen scientists or the new birders that we were looking to, um, to create or to develop. So the idea was put this trained ornithologist together in touch with nature enthusiasts um, around the country and then get them to, um, in the process of interacting with each other in that setting of a bird club, so the people who had the interests but needed the skills would learn from the people who had the skills. So that was, the, that was our idea of uh, the bird clubs. So most of the initial people who joined the bird clubs were family and friends. So for example, when I uh, was going out for bird watching, I would invite my brother or anyone at home, come with me, let's go bird watching. Um, and also, as a lecturer in the university, I could also invite students to come with me to um, on the bird watching trip. And given this um, a regular a regular schedule, so it was usually during the weekends. And going out during the weekends, we were able to then um, get people to come together in this sort of social settings, the bird clubs. So um, there was skills transfer from the trade ornithologist and then there was an audience for us to begin to talk about what we wanted to do. So that was the idea of the bird clubs and also um, with other people who were really keen to participate in this project, going out with a trained um, ornithologist or an experienced bird watcher was another way for us to kind of get quality control for the data. So that was the idea of the bird clubs. And so very quickly we started with uh, forming bird clubs. But the idea of the bird clubs was not entirely new. So prior to the Bird Atlas project, there were two bird clubs. And um, these were the Lucky Bird Club and the Ibadan Bird Clubs. But very quickly, I will say that these bird clubs were mainly um, expert based. So we had people um, from, uh, from other parts of the world working in Nigeria who already had experience with bird watching. So the um, prior bird clubs that we had before the project were mainly made up of people um, with this sort of background. And so um, very quickly, you know, working with the um, other alumni, we were able to get them to start bed clubs where they were. And um, the idea was to start as many of these bed clubs as possible and to get one in every locality that we could within the country. So uh, this is just a quick distribution of some of the places where we have bed clubs and the ones where um, you can see the black dots are areas where we still need bed clubs. Some of them already now have uh, bed clubs. So um, using this strategy, this bed club strategy, we were able to establish another um, 23 more bed clubs. And the last time when we did a quick, uh, uh, a quick survey of the membership for all of these bed clubs, we had somewhere around 800 people um, in all of these bed clubs. So these are people at different levels of um, bird watching experience. And it's, it's, it's actually remarkable, you know, the interest that this has generated for us in Nigeria. But very quickly to give you very specific examples of how this have, has, has developed. So the Ibadan Bird Club is one of the bird clubs that existed before we started the Bird Atlas project. So it was started in March 2014. And, but then very quickly it, it died because, like I said, it was mainly expert based. And once these people left, these bed clubs didn't uh, continue. But then um, in, in 2016, one of the graduates from Aplori, he had, he had just completed his master's and had gotten a job um, at the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture where the Ibadan Bed Club was based. So he was then given the responsibility to relaunch this bed club. And he had been a member, uh, he had been part of the initial workshop that we did at the end of 2015 to launch the Bird Atlas project. So he was now joining this bird club, you know, having the idea that um, atlasing was something that the bird club could do. 
So he invited us and we gave a workshop to this bed club. And from there, the Ibadan bed club then took on, you know, like a life of its own with Atlas in being um, one of the core things that the bed club was um, involved in. Um, another very interesting thing that very quickly happened with the Ibadan bed club was uh, the, the, the institute was a center where we had people from all over the region. So the Southwest region in Nigeria, um, but, uh, we had lots of people coming from around the region to the institute. And so they would be a part of the uh, bed club. Some of them were uh, studying at the university in Ibadan. But then once they finished their programs and went back to their various homes, they still wanted to continue with the really exciting thing that they had been doing with the Ibadan bed club. So very quickly, they started inviting each other. Can you visit me and let's go bird watching in my area? And they started what we, uh, what they coined SWAT, which is the Southwest Atlas team. So that was how um, we moved from the idea of bird clubs to the idea of Atlas teams. So the Southwest Atlas team was the first, it was formed in 2016. And you can see in the map uh, there, just showing the Southwest region where these guys are based. And you can very quickly see what the Southwest Atlas team was able to achieve. So over 300 pentads, and most of this done by the members of this Southwest Atlas teams. And these, so the Atlas teams are kind of like a step, a step, um, a step above the bed clubs. So the bed clubs is like the training ground. And once you get a bit comfortable with your bed identification, then you join the Atlas teams and then you can do some of the Atlas bashes that um, these guys go around doing. So this is one example from the Southwest Atlas team. And then in a similar manner, we then started another Atlas team in the North. So um, Ariwa stands for North in Nigeria. So in a similar fashion as the Southwest Atlas team, we started the Ariwa Atlas team. So this was more or less based on the successes that we enjoyed with the Southwest Atlas team. So Ariwa Atlas team was then focused on working in the North. So in the Northern part of Nigeria, this was formed in, two, in 2018. And very quickly, you will see how remarkable the coverage improved once the Ariwa Atlas team came together. So again, this is uh, one very exciting, uh, exciting outcome of how the bird clubs have developed into Atlas teams and people have taken the idea of bird watching for fun and for Atlasing, uh, really taking it on board. And very recently, so um, in June um, 2019, we were able to get the grant from the National Geographic Society to do some capacity building work. So through that grant, we organized field courses and we mainly focused on um, really enthusiastic people who wanted to participate, but didn't uh, really feel confident enough to go out bird watching. So we kept them um, in really nice places in the field for four weeks with intensive you know, bird watching training. And at the end of that, and after um, narrating the experiences from the Southwest Atlas team and the Ariwa Atlas team, then the guys from the Southeast and the South-South felt like they wanted to start another Atlas team in the Southeast and South-South. So that was how we started with the Southeast, South-South Atlas team. So they, are, they call themselves CESAT, and that is another Atlas team that now operates mainly around the Southeast, the South-South uh, of the country. So these guys also doing really remarkable work. Um, the photo up there is their first outing um, at, towards the end of 2019 when they did the first uh, um, Atlas Bash in the Southeast uh, region of Nigeria. So essentially that's how uh, the bird watching community and the Atlasing community has developed since we started at the end of 2015. So from just two bird clubs, we now have over 23 bird clubs, we already mentioned about 800 members in all of these clubs. So all at different levels of um, their bird watching journey. Um, and from the three initial atlases, so the three of us started now, there are close to 200 people who have participated and contributed data uh, to the Nigerian Bird Atlas uh, database. So more than 20% of the country is not covered. So uh, somewhere around 2,335 pentads now with full protocol um, card submissions. And of course, if you go to the Facebook group, there is even much more people. So I think it's way more than 3,000 now. And most of these people are engaging in the discussions about birds and bird watching in Nigeria. And it's really exciting to see 
the conversations that go on in these groups. Of course, volunteering is not something that we are really uh, used to, but it's a culture that is beginning to grow. And then getting people to join the bed clubs initially can be a bit of a challenge, but then once people get in, they begin to you know, engage. Um, we have some challenges with getting them the equipment they need to enjoy the bird watching experience. But for now, we get lots of donations from some organizations, some use binoculars, and we're able to give it out to people. And most of these Atlas bashes, um, we have to subsidize the costs for people to travel for these Atlas bashes. So those are some of the things that we still um, have to uh, make, uh, make arrangements for. But by and large, I would say organizing the bird watching community was quite interesting and it was good to identify first of all the existing community and then um, I think the idea to put people together in that social group like the bird clubs was a good one. Um, it has helped, you know, to get people to work together and, you know, there's that reciprocal and mutual um, encouragement that people get from working together in groups and in teams. Um, we did a lot of awareness creation by traveling around uh, and giving seminars and organizing workshops. And we have worked a lot with uh, social media, you know, WhatsApp and Facebook. Most of the Atlas outings are organized on Facebook and um, WhatsApp. So we have used that a lot. And then creating opportunities for training has been also something that has been really good. And the funding support that we have always gotten has been, you know, like some of the things that has um, helped us a lot um, on this journey. So yeah, basically that's our story. That's our experience with the Bird Atlas project in Nigeria. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Sam. Thanks.